so now we are going to have a talk uh, of Sergei Vladimirovich Troitsky uh, from uh, Institute for Nuclear Research about the axions. Uh, can, you, can, can, can you see the slides? Yes, we can. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the conveners of uh, this uh, nice conference for inviting me. And uh, I was asked to speak about axions uh, with uh, in quite general terms. And uh, uh, because it's a very wide uh, field, I decided to select uh, very different, uh, I would say, events or results or discussions uh, related to axions and dated by this uh, particular year, 2020. So uh, or at, at a few slides, I will show my original results, some of which are, were obtained jointly with these gentlemen and uh, supported in part by the Russian Science Foundation. To start with, uh, let, us dis uh, let us define uh, what is the axion and uh, uh, what is uh, nowadays called an axion is, not a, uh, is normally not an axion, but an axion-like particle. Let me uh, give a very de general definition of that. Suppose that uh, we have a um, complex color field and uh, uh, its uh, interaction potential, self-interaction potential allows for a U1 symmetry, U1 global symmetry. Like for instance, in the left, uh, in, the, in the picture on the left, uh, which uh, represents a profile of the potential of the, the well-known maximum head pot profile of the potential uh, versus the real and imaginary part of the field not shown in axis. And uh, uh, this kind of potential uh, results in the spontaneous breaking of the U1 symmetry when uh, vacuum state selects uh, when the nature selects one of the vacuum states shown in red. And uh, of course, uh, this spontaneous breaking is associated with a massless Goldstone boson. This is a one scale theory the, uh, and uh, it is normally characterized by the dimensional full, the dimensional value of the radius of this circle in the field space or the, or the modulus of the vacuum expectation value of the field and the phase of, of, of the field is the Goldstone boson. Suppose now we add uh, a look to the right and uh, to the right hand picture and um, suppose we uh, add a little perturbation to this potential which tilts it a little bit for instance a linear perturbation so that instead of a uh, uh, an infinite number of vacua, we now have only one in the minimum, then this is, uh, if uh, we do not destroy the entire structure, it is called small explicit uh, U1 symmetry breaking in addition to the spontaneous, and uh, the uh, would-be Goldstone boson is uh, not massless, but still it is a light, it is a light particle. However, here we have a two scale theory because in addition to the spontaneous symmetry breaking scale, we have a, an, an explicit symmetry breaking scale, which is responsible for the mass. And uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, particle is called pseudo Goldstone boson. And this pseudo Goldstone boson is uh, the axion or the axion like particle in general. Uh, for, for a general U1, uh, which may appear in many uh, different uh, extensions of the standard model. This is an axion-like particle. However, uh, originally and historically, it was a particular U1, which is related to the, uh, uh, to the puzzle of the CP conservation in uh, uh, the strong interaction. So it is a very special U1, which was at the origin of the axion uh, story uh, due to Piché and Queen in 1977. And uh, it is, uh, mm, here is a 
the title page of their paper and uh, some nice pictures I found on the web. And uh, uh, actually, uh, it is the proper axion. This uh, particle is a proper axion, but normally people say axion and mean axion like particles these days. And why uh, I uh, I'm stressing this paper and these uh, pictures in uh, the talk about 2020 axions is just uh, because uh, this summer, Roberto Pecci, who was one of the authors of that uh, the very famous Yuan, uh, left us. And uh, this is quite an this was quite an event for for the action community and uh, at the next slide uh, let me spend a couple of minutes with my very personal uh, personal impressions uh, I have never uh, met Roberto Pecci in person but he uh, he's um, well, he affected uh, my scientific light at its very beginning because uh, in 1993, uh, I was a young student and uh, somehow with the help of Vadim Alexeyevich Kuzmin, whom, uh, who was working in our department and with Roberto Pecci, who's working in the department um, of physics at the University of California at Los Angeles, uh, we managed to get uh, some dollars and uh, young uh, scientists and young students in our theoretical physics group in Moscow received maybe two or three or several hundred dollars each. And it was at the time, it was long before uh, launching of international cooperation grants and uh, all that. It was just uh, the time when uh, we received fellowships of uh, which converted uh, to dollars and recalculated in terms of dollars. It gave a one digit number probably per month. So it was a fortune for young students and for me and for uh, other people I know, um, it was an important factor in st uh, towards staying in theoretical physics. And this is uh, my very first paper with a very strange acknowledgement. And uh, uh, just when prepar preparing these slides, I Googled what the Weingart Foundation is. And uh, I wonder how Roberto Pecci managed to get from it money for Russian theoretical physics students. Uh, it's uh, uh, it seems to be completely orthogonal to their normal grant program. So thank you very much, uh, Roberta, and uh, rest with peace. However, since then, since 1977 and up to this, these days, uh, the axioms became popular because uh, they are related, to, uh, the studies of axioms are related not only to the strong CP problem, but also to uh, other fundamental symmetries. Uh, in particular, a plethora of axion like particles are predicted by string theories. A huge uh, bunch of papers are devoted to axions as the dark matter particle, hypothetical one, one of possible uh, interesting from theoretical side and not excluded from experimental side, uh, dark matter options. It is related also to other things in cosmology, like cosmological structure formation, topological defects, and so on. It is related to pure astrophysics with, uh, uh, because it affects stellar evolution and uh, how supernova explodes. It is related to gamma ray astronomy and the co cosmic rays of ultra high energies, and uh, even possibly for solar corona heating, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, this gives a, yes, as of yesterday, this gives a um, record of Inspire, uh, the number of papers which has, which have Axion or Alp in uh, their title is uh, this, 3,700 something. And uh, of course, like the previous speaker, I show the corresponding plot 
demonstrating the rise of uh, interest of the community in axions. So next, uh, uh, coming back to physics, it's uh, the uh, general uh, interaction of the axion-like particle with photons, which we will be interested in in this talk in particular. And uh, it is allowed by all symmetries and uh, it uh, has to appear. And uh, it, the coupling in front of it is uh, the suppressed by the scale. Uh, you remember it's a two scale theory and it is suppressed by the large mass which is responsible to the U1 breaking. On the other hand, the second parameter in the Lagrangian is the axion mass, which is a small mass related to the explicit breaking of the same theory. For the QCD axion, these two parameters are related. Uh, but for, for an ALT, they are just general. And uh, this uh, latest, uh, th this uh, latest uh, term in the Lagrangian, it gives the rise to this kind of a Feynman, of Feynman diagram. And uh, it explains the phenomenon of the photon uh, to axion mixing in the external magnetic field. If one of these photon lines is the external magnetic field, classical field, then it is just a conversion of photon to axion or back. And the probability of this conversion deter is determined by uh, the, these two parameters of the Lagrangian and uh, also on the energy of the photon and the value of the external field, of course. Another um, interaction of interest is the interaction of axion-like particles with fermions. In particular, we will be interested uh, in electrons. But uh, this is uh, not that general like the photon coupling because it depends on uh, the particular um, collection of fields which are charged under this uh, U1 symmetry and on their charge values. And uh, it could be equal to zero in particular for electron. Uh, but in general, a coupling of a pseudo Goldstone boson is determined by the currents of these particles under this uh, U1 symmetry tree. And um, it is uh, determined by, for, for a purely uh, pure Goldstone, it is determined by the geometry of the vacuum space. and. Uh, mm -hmm. For a pseudo Goldstone boson, it is uh, easily modified to be like this. These are dimensionless coupling, but they are also suppressed by the large uh, scale for the U1 symmetry breaking. Uh, coming back, back to the alt photon conversion, it uh, means that uh, it provides a way to search for axon laws in a laboratory because. Uh, be, uh, the interaction of axion-like particles with uh, any kind of visible matter or radiation is very small, is very, very much suppressed. So it penetrates uh, opaque objects like walls. So if in principle, if you have a magnetic field, to pr if you have uh, some photons, if you have magnetic field, some of them are converted to axions. These axions penetrate the opaque region or the wall and uh, may be converted back to photons in another part of the magnetic field. This is a basis for a labor purely laboratory experiments or for searching for axions with lasers. And before proceeding to astrophysics, which is actually uh, axion astrophysics is the uh, field which I was working uh, for a while. Um, I will uh, discuss that uh, the point that the universe, actually the entire universe can be used like this wall because it is opaque to high energy gamma rays. It is opaque because uh, of the pair production when an energetic photon uh, meets uh, a low energy counterpart from uh, the background radiation, it can produce pairs since uh, the pair production is organized as a threshold process in quantum electrodynamics and uh, this cross section is maximal. It peaks strongly just above the threshold. Then essentially 
every um, energetic photon chooses a low energy counterpart of a certain energy. And therefore the mean free pass of the energetic photons, uh, which is plotted here over 12, over 14, sorry, uh, orders of magnitude in energy and uh, over um, how much? seven orders of magnitude in distance. Um, is fully determined by the density of background photons with energy. It is just a reflection of the background, of the background density plot. Uh, and it is important to say that the mean, while uh, in the gamma ray astronomy domain, uh, it changes a lot. The photon mean free pass changes a lot from the entire universe, uh, tens of uh, gigaparsecs at a few GeV, times to the size of our galaxy smaller than our galaxy above 100 TV. And uh, this means that for sufficiently energetic um, photons, we can use the universe like a wall in the shining light experiments, take a distant quasar as a light source, take its own magnetic field as the field, take the universe as a, uh, with the pair production as the wall, take our galaxy or uh, our galaxy cluster as the second field and repeat the light shining through wall experiment. This, may, uh, this uh, opens the possibility to look for axions in the gamma ray astronomy. And in fact, there is a story of some uh, anomalous transparency of the universe for gamma rays, which started with the very first observations of distant gamma ray sources in, uh, in the end of the, of the last century. And it was called then um, infrared TV crisis. Uh, and uh, it was uh, just individual observations. And who knows what happens in an individual source. Then this lady noticed it in an unpublished uh, conference talk that spectra of distant sources, uh, when compared to physically similar nearby sources, look differently. In, in, and uh, they develop some uh, hardenings at high energies, which look very strange. And in particular, when the with, uh, with the time, the statistics of uh, uh, high energy observations of distant object increased and the statistical analysis became possible. And uh, these statistical analysis demonstrated that these upward features at the in the corrected spectra up, uh, were happened right at the energies for which the correction becomes important. These energies are different for the sources at different distances. And this ex uh, gave an explanation of the observation of Naiske that um, in terms of the simply incorrect account of the absorption. However, what is uh, going uh, on here? Uh, the latest study is uh, of, of the uh, 2019 states that with increasing statistics and in particular with better known distances to, to the sources, the anomaly is uh, confirmed for a part of the sources, uh, including these all, they do, do, did not did disappear and uh, some of uh, new ones. However, many new and possibly weaker sources do not demonstrate any problem. So the overall statistical significance of uh, the anomaly is uh, quite modest. And uh, what we have, we have that some objects look anomalous and some are not. And if we put uh, them on the sky map, here, the anomalous gamma ray blazers are shown in re as red dots. We see that they are distributed over the sky maps in a strongly non-uniform way. And uh, actually, they correlate with the local matter distribution, with the local supercluster or the local filament, which is quite strange because in the local filament, we see them with uh, more through more matter, and it is counterintuitive. We look them uh, through more matter, and we see less absorption than we expect. 
Uh, however, it's quite natural in the in case of the axion photon mixing because uh, more matter means uh, larger magnetic fields, which are a necessary ingredient of the axion photon mixing in the large cell structure filaments. So for instance, this is the Milky Way. And if this is our filament, and if you look along our filament and along the source filament, we have uh, um, the anomaly. And in all other combinations, we do not have so these huge parts of the sky uh, not covered by the local galaxy distribution are blind to the anomaly. This is in fact, uh, the it, was, it was proposed as an explanation for another anomaly, which is still yet unresolved is the correlation of uh, distant, very distant objects with the cosmic radio as detected by the higher resolution FLISA experiments in the beginning of uh, this century. However, uh, I, I have no time to develop this. And um, I just uh, flash this slide saying that uh, uh, new tests of uh, this, um, uh, this uh, strange effect are coming with uh, more isotropic and larger samples of lasers with the tests of uh, the high rays correlations with the currently working experiment in cosmic rays. And of course, with the search of the corresponding axion like particles in a laboratory. Uh, coming to the laboratories, uh, there is another, uh, there was another event in this year concerning uh, axon-like particles. It was a claim for an observation of a solar, uh, of a, the, an axon-like particle of the solar origin uh, interacting with electrons in the liquid xenon experiment for a dark matter, for, for dark matter searches in uh, Grand Sasso laboratory, underground laboratory, xenon-1t, uh, which uh, searches for electronic recoil and uh, demonstrated uh, Look here, it is their plot, which demonstrated some extents of, at very low energies, which is uh, right the, uh, at uh, the energies um, where one expects uh, the vi this violet peak on the upper plot. Uh, the, um, expect, it is uh, the energy range of the solar axion produced not by the usual Primakov effect uh, due to interaction with photons, but with, because of the interaction with uh, electrons. And uh, uh, the, experiment, uh, the authors of that experimental paper uh, claim that this is, gives the best uh, explanation of the peak. Though this peak is uh, quite uh, close to their sensitivity uh, boundary, to the boundary of their sensitivity region, but still uh, uh, they claim there are no other background, known background and so on. The problem with this uh, is that this uh, particle seems to be excluded from astrophysics. Uh, it gives, uh, this plot gives us some parameter space for of the, um, they prefer. And uh, the axion-like particles uh, affect stellar evolution a lot because they are if they are uh, very few, uh, weakly interacting, then they co compete with neutrinos with, uh, in removing energy from the stellar interiors where, uh, for, from hot interiors of the stars, which means that the stellar evolutionary time scales shorten considerably. If the interaction is a bit stronger, the, uh, the situation is even worse because they transfer energy from one part to the, of the star to another, which may lead to a mechanical destruction. Here are uh, two, uh, the re relevant for electron coupling constraints. There are four kinds of relevant constraints and they, all these constraints are much stronger than the laboratory experiments. Mm. I tried to find the very first references. I hope I succeeded, uh, but, uh, there are many, many other works on that. And this is how the Xenon 1T result uh, faces these uh, uh, constraints. Uh, the, blue, uh, the blue band is the values of couplings preferred by Xenon. And uh, the red uh, part is the parameter space allowed by 
the um, combined astrophysical field. And uh, various uh, ways, uh, essentially these are four ways I have shown on the previous slide. The uh, helium, bur helium burning stars, tip of the red, red giant branch, white dwarf luminosity function, and several particular white pulsa pulsating white dwarf. Uh, they give a 19 sigma uh, tension with, uh, they call it tension, I would call it exclusion of the Xenon 1T explanation or in terms of uh, solar axions interacting with electrons. And in fact, even 10 times smaller constant is also excluded at 99% confidence level. So what next? Next uh, is um, to find or to search for these, uh, to search for these axion-like particles in the in laboratories. And my favorite experiment is a purely laboratory experiment and light shining through the wall uh, project, which is under construction in DAISY. It is uh, actually constructed and uh, they are working on uh, to start da data taking soon. They use uh, fantastic things. They use, uh, they straightened uh, magnets from the HERA accelerator and uh, of, uh, put uh, their uh, cavities, resonant cavities, and uh, they plan to lock these two cavities. In a, it is a quite precise uh, experiment. And then they put a laser light there and uh, it's a light shining through the wall experiment. We also planned another kind of experiment here in INR in Troitsk. And um, it is a helioscope, like a cast helioscope in CERN uh, to detect to, to use the sun as the source of axons and uh, a magnet to convert them to photons. H however, uh, we proposed to use refurbished equi equipment, but we still needed 3 million euro uh, for this experiment. And in three years, it was not funded. Unlike our competing project uh, with a very similar concept and uh, sensitivity, which gained in these three years, which gained 6.5 million euro from European grants and construction is already started, started in DAISY. And we, we uh, former taste groups one by one are joining this baby AXA pro project now. So here is my summary. Uh, more discoveries to Helen Quinn, who is uh, working and uh, last week she was giving a, le a lecture on axions uh, in, um, through Zoom and um, mm, tribute to and many thanks uh, and including personal thanks to Roberto Pecci who left us this year. There are some interesting activities in gamma ray astronomy and uh, some hints to the possible indications to axion-like particles there and more tests to come. The xenon T, 1T excess uh, is probably not related to axions because uh, the axion explanation is excluded uh, from stellar evolution by 19 sigmas. And there are new laboratory experiments coming, unfortunately not in Russia. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Sergei Vadimovich, for a very nice talk. Uh, and we have one expression in chat, a fantastic talk. Thank you from Alexander Nozik. Thank you. I fully agree with this. So unfortunately, we are out of schedule and uh, I can probably afford only one very urgent question uh, or maybe comment. Uh, so the most axion-like uh, A particles considered do not relate to P problem. Uh, to that's, I'm not sure I understand the question actually. Um, to CP, to the strong CP problem maybe. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Perhaps, sorry, perhaps. sorry. sorry. Or typos, uh, yes, I mean, I mean CP uh, problem, strong CP problem. Uh, yes, uh, the on, only a part of them are related uh, to the strong CP problem. Look here for, uh, this is, uh, if you can still uh, see my slides, this is the parameter space of the mass and uh, coupling to photons. And the uh, yellow band are QCD axions, but there are many other options uh, to be studied. 